Thank you for watching today's message from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Our message today is... Grace for the past and God's peace for the future are yours through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear Christians who are completing yet another year of our Lord, New Year's is really a rather superstitious holiday, if you didn't know that already. Maybe you've heard that uh, people in the South, uh, they generally eat collard greens and black-eyed peas on New Year's Day, it's supposed to bring you good luck in the, in the year to come. At midnight tonight, I'm not sure if that is passed yet in Spain, but at the stroke of midnight in Spain, everyone eats 12 grapes, or a lot of people eat 12 grapes, one for every month of the year, supposed to bring you 12 prosperous months this year. Even the tradition of smooching your sweetheart at the stroke of midnight is supposed to set the tone for how your relationship is going to go throughout the coming year. There are all kinds of superstitions out there in regards to New Year. Some of them even border on silliness and bizarre. All of them promise to bring you good luck or good fortune or even to keep away evil spirits in the months of head. Many of them are quite silly, and yet people keep doing them year after year after year. Another year passes for us. Regardless of whether or not you're ready to say goodbye to 2018 or not, people everywhere are searching, grasping for anything that will give them hope and confidence that the year ahead, 2019, will be just as good, if not hopefully a little bit better, than the year that has just gone by. Now, it wasn't New Year's Eve for Abraham in these verses that we have before us from Genesis chapter 22, when he took his son, his only son Isaac, to Mount Moriah to sacrifice him to God. But Abraham was grappling with questions in his mind, wondering what the future was going to hold for him. In Genesis chapter 22, God uses Abraham to show us where we should be putting our trust on this New Year's Eve and, and every day as we look into an uncertain future. Since God first appeared to Abraham and called him to, to leave his homeland and move to the, to the land of Canaan, uh, many years have passed by the time we're arriving at this lesson where he's sacrificing Isaac. God called Abraham when Abraham was in his mid-70s and promised him that he was going to have a son. It took 25 years for God to keep that promise. And Abraham and Sarah already said at 65 and 75 that they were too old to have kids. God made Abraham wait that long. Sarah was 90. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. And by the time of our reading of Genesis chapter 22, we assume Isaac's maybe about 15, 17 years old, so Abraham is that much older still. And God had promised Abraham, no, it's through Isaac that your offspring would be reckoned. It's through Isaac that all of these wonderful promises that God had given to Abraham through this child, through Isaac, all of these were going to come true. And Abraham believed those promises that he would become a great nation and even that the savior of the world would come through his family. He believed that they were going to happen through Isaac because that's what God had promised to him. And for all of those reasons, on top of a father's love for his only son, God wasn't kidding when he said to Abraham, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. He described him well. And he wasn't kidding either when he told Abraham to do the unthinkable and take him to a specific place and give him up as a sacrifice to God. We read from Genesis chapter 22. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. 
Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and he saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham, Father, yes my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said. But where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. We'll pause there for just a moment. We can only imagine what sort of fears and thoughts were tussling in Abraham's heart and his mind as he walked along those three days to the place where he was going to sacrifice his son. Why would, why would God do this to him? Why would he take away that precious gift after he had waited so long to have a son that he wanted so badly? And I have to imagine that as Abraham walked, his thoughts went back to what had happened in those 25 years since his relationship with the Lord began in earnest. All of the things that God had brought Abraham through. God had seen him through one difficult situation after another. He kept Abraham and Sarah safe in Egypt when Pharaoh had taken her away into his harem. God had kept Abraham and Sarah safe again yet another time when the same thing happened with King Abimelech. And Abraham actually came out very well blessed and loaded with, with herds and flocks from those incidents. God helped Abraham with just a few hundred servants that he had in his household go out and defeat massive armies that had taken Lot and the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah as plunder and and were were walking off with Abraham's family. God gave, delivered them into Abraham's hands and allowed him to win the victory and, and be the hero that day. It was only when Abraham had not put his trust in the Lord that he really found himself in a lot of trouble. So I have to imagine that Abraham was thinking of all of the times that God had shown him great and wonderful love in tough situations in the past. I have to imagine, in fact we know, that he was clinging to those promises that God had given to him, that through Isaac these promises would come true. And it was only looking at God's, his experience with God in the past and trusting in God's promises to him for the future that Abraham was able to stride confidently toward this trial that he needed to face. He knew that God was going to take care of them, even though he didn't know exactly how God was going to do it. He believed so strongly that God was going to keep his promises through Isaac, and no one else, that Abraham actually believed God could and would raise him from the dead if God had allowed him to go so far as to kill his son. And so Abraham could say with confidence to his servants who stayed with the donkey, I and the boy will go over there, we will worship, and then we will come back to you. It's no accident that Isaac asked his dad about the lamb on the way up the mountain. And it's no accident that God had that question, that short conversation recorded for us by the pen of Moses in scriptures. Here it is for us to read on this New Year's Eve. You can almost hear Abraham repeating the answer to Isaac's question over and over to, almost to himself, more so than to Isaac. God will provide. He always has. He always has. 
And you and I can say the same thing about God's kindness to us as we look over the year that has now come to a close. Just think of all the stressful days that you went through. Maybe there were times during this past year that you <laughs> thought you were at the end of your rope, didn't have any further to go. God brought you through, didn't he? No matter what the situation was, you're here tonight. God took care of you. You always had food on the table. You always had clothes to wear. Your family's been greatly blessed this year. Perhaps you've been so blessed this year that looking back on the year past, you can't even remember what it was you were so worried about and worked up about. God blessed you so greatly and answered your prayers so well that you can't even remember what it was that bothered you so badly. Sometimes that may be the case, but not all the time. God was working to take care of you and gives you his promises that everything will work out for your good in the end, just like he made it work out for Abraham. We continue reading. When they reached the place that God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Then Abraham returned to his servants, and they set off together for Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Abraham's trust in the Lord was not misplaced, was it? And God went ahead and showed Abraham how true his words were in answer to his son. God will provide the lamb. He provided the ram for the burnt offering, just like Abraham said he would. Think of how Abraham must have rejoiced to see that ram there in the thicket, to know that his, his answer to his son was true, that God really does provide. Think of how joyfully Abraham untied his son, probably gave him a giant hug there, even right beside the altar. But the ram wasn't the only blessing that God gave to Abraham there on that mountain. God poured out blessing after blessing on Abraham for putting his trust in the Lord. More blessings than Abraham would even be able to count. As many blessings as the sand and the seashore and the stars in the sky. His descendants, through his beloved son Isaac, whom God preserved and continued to bless Abraham with, would bring this great nation. It would be a strong nation that would take possession of the, the gates of their enemies. It would be a nation blessed by God himself and even the greatest blessing on earth, a savior was going to come through Isaac and Abraham's family. God showed Abraham that day in a magnificent way that we should always put our trust in him. He'll never let us down. Just like the psalmist says in Psalm 112, blessed is the man who fears the Lord. He will have no fear of bad news. His heart is steadfast trusting in the Lord. His heart is sincere. He will have no fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on all of his foes. And so as 2018 draws to a close and a new year dawns on the horizon, may these words be true about your year ahead in the Lord. Your trust in the one who has sustained you through every day of your life in the past and every year so far 
that will give you the assurance that God will continue to sustain you, continue to bless you, and continue to keep his promises that he has made to you so that you can say with Abraham, with confidence, the Lord will provide. He always has, and he promises he always will. Amen. Please stand. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Thank you for watching today's message from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Join us for worship at the following times, like us on Facebook, or visit our website for audio and video sermons or to find out more about our congregation. God bless your week in the Lord.